Ocean waters are dynamic in nature. The movements of ocean water are caused by various characteristics of ocean waters like temperature, density and salinity. Gravitational attraction of the sun and the moon and the rotation of the earth. Earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occurring at the ocean floor, etc. Waves, tides and ocean currents are the three main forms of ocean water movement. Let us study about sea waves. While taking tea, you may have observed formation of ripples when you blow air on its surface. The wind pushes sea water in the same way. As a result of the impact of wind energy, the sea water gains momentum and ripples develop on its surface. These are called sea waves. As a result of the waves, sea water moves up and down and slightly to and fro. Waves transmit the energy contained in them towards the coast. On entering the shallow water in the coastal zone, they break. Now learn more about structure of the wave. You can easily identify the peak and trough as two components of a wave. With the help of these two components, the length and amplitude of waves can be expressed. The difference of height between the peak and the trough is called the amplitude of the wave. The distance between two peaks or two troughs is called wavelength. Velocity of waves. A person standing on the seashore or on a beach sees waves approaching the coast. If you throw a floating object at a sufficiently long distance in the sea, you will find that the object keeps on moving up and down at the same place. It does not move towards the coast. This means that the water in the wave does not move forward. It just oscillates up and down. The velocity of waves depends on the velocity of the wind. If the wind velocity is higher, the waves rise high up. During storms, waves can rise to a considerable height. Such waves can prove to be devastating. Wind is the main reason of wave generation. However, waves can also be generated due to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions on the ocean floor. The height of such waves increases as they approach the coast. These waves are called tsunami waves. These are highly destructive and may lead to large-scale loss of property and life. At times, tsunami waves can rise to heights over 30 meters. The earthquake that occurred near Sumatra Island in 2004 had generated huge tsunami waves, tides. Tide is the movement of ocean water that occurs regularly every day. The rise or fall in the ocean water level at specific times is called tide. The rise of water level is called high tide, while the fall of the water level is called low tide. Tides occur due to the gravitational force of the sun and the moon and the centrifugal tendency generated on the earth as a result of the relative motions of the sun, the moon and the earth. The sun is a larger body, but as the moon is closer to the earth, the moon's gravitational force is greater than that of the sun. Let us try to understand how tides are generated by the moon. Point A on the earth is closer to the moon. So, the gravitational force of the moon is maximum at this point. At point C, it will be moderate and at point B, it will be minimum. The centrifugal force caused by the relative motions of the earth and the moon and the gravitational force of the moon operate in opposite directions. At point C, both the forces are equal. At A, the gravitational force of the moon exceeds the centrifugal force. So, the water on the earth's surface is pulled towards the moon and this causes high tide. At point B, the centrifugal force 
is more influential than the gravitational force of the moon. Therefore, at B, the water is pulled in the direction away from the moon and this too gives rise to high tide. Thus, high tide occurs at both A and B at both these points. The water level rises. The water required for this rise moves in from other parts. Therefore, the water in those other areas recedes. It recedes maximum at point P and F and so low tide occurs at these points. This means the longitude facing the moon and the one opposite to it will have a high tide and at the two longitudes perpendicular to these, there will be a low tide. In the same way, the sun too causes high and low tides. Types of Tides The following are the two main types of tides. First type is spring tide. The forces of the moon and the sun generating tides operate in one and the same direction on the new moon and the full moon days. This tide is called spring tide. As a result of the greater amount of rise in the water level at the place of the high tide, the locations of low tides experience greater lowering of water level. Second type is neap tide. While revolving around the earth, the moon is at right angle to the earth with respect to the sun twice in a month. This situation is observed on quarter moon days. On these two days, the tide generating forces of the moon and the sun operate in different directions. The region where the sun causes high tide, the moon creates a low tide condition. As against this, the region where the moon causes high tide, the sun creates low tide conditions. Therefore, during the high tide generated on these days, the water level has a lower rise and the low tides also have a lesser fall to a lesser extent. This type of tide is called neap tide. Note that the difference in the water level at high and low tides is greater in spring tide and lower in neap tide. We shall study about the importance of tides. During high tide, along with the sea water, large quantities of fish rush towards the estuaries which benefits the fishing activity there. As the water level rises at the time of high tides, it enables the larger vessels to reach and move out of the ports. The sewage from urban centers, contaminated water from industries, etc. are released into the sea in the coastal areas. The to and fro movement of tide waters helps flush out this contaminated water from the coast. Scientists believe that the organisms in sea must have moved on to the land during high tides and subsequently developed there. Attempts are now being made to generate electricity using the phenomena of tides. Let us learn about ocean currents. The horizontal movement of the ocean water over a long distance in a particular direction is called ocean current. Ocean currents are permanent features. Direction, speed and continuity are the characteristics of ocean currents. Ocean currents act as the distributors of heat. Through them, heat is distributed on a global scale. The speed of ocean currents is quite slow. It is generally 2 to 10 kilometers per hour. Origin of the ocean currents The regularly operating planetary winds brush against the ocean surface. They drag the ocean water along with them. This makes the ocean waters gain speed and a specific direction and thus ocean currents are generated. On a global scale, almost all ocean currents flow in the direction of the planetary winds. However, their directions can get modified in response to the nature of the coastlines. The major ocean currents from different oceans are shown in the figure. 
Study these and note the names and direction of these currents. Types of ocean currents. First type is warm ocean currents. The currents that move hot water towards cold regions are called warm currents. Generally, they originate in the equatorial region and move towards the polar regions. Second type is cold ocean currents. The cold currents move cold water towards region of hot climate. Generally, they originate in the polar areas and move towards the equatorial region. Let us study more about effects of ocean currents on human life, ocean currents and climate. The warm or cold currents influence the temperature of the regions along which they flow. Rainfall in the coastal areas is also affected by the ocean currents. The coast along which a warm current flows generally receives more rain. As against this, the coast along which a cold current flows receives less rain. Thick fog is developed in the regions where warm and cold currents converge. Such condition is observed near Newfoundland Island where the warm Gulf Stream and the cold Labrador current meet. Such thick fog hinders transportation. Ocean currents and fisheries. Marine plants, algae, plankton, etc. thrive well in the areas where warm and cold currents meet. This is food for the fishes. As a result, fish from the surrounding areas come there on a large scale. They breed there. Hence, large-scale fishing grounds develop in such areas. Ocean Currents and Transportation Ocean currents are of considerable importance in transportation. As far as possible, vessels follow ocean currents. This increases their speed and saves time and fuel. Thus, the cost of transportation is reduced.